In this video, I will tell you guys why you can understand more than you can speak in the Arabic language. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa brother Muhammad Al-Andalusi, founder of AndalusInstitute.com. And in this video, we will talk about a very common phenomenon around the students of the Arabic language. Ala wa huwa, isn't it the phenomenon of being able to understand more than what you can speak. You have gone over the Medina books, you have gone over La Arabiya Bayna Yadig, you have gone over Kitab Al Asasi, or whatever book you have gone, or program, or markaz, or whatever it might be, and you feel like you have completed that program. However, your speech rate, your fluency, your proficiency when speaking is not where you expected it to be. Now, why does that happen? First of all, we need to look at a very interesting research some experts in the linguistics have come up with, which is the two main factors that measure someone's fluency in a language. They said the first one is the speech rate, how fast it is, how many syllabus per minute does the person come with, how many vocabulary words, how many words is he able to say per minute, his speech rate. And the second factor to define somebody's or measure somebody's fluency is the uterine's length, like how, what can he come up with or what can he generate and how many times as well does he pause and think and hesitate and uh, uh, um, uh, all of this, how many times does he do that and is he able and how quick is he able to come up with the next word with the next sentence when he does that. These two main factors are basically measures somebody's fluency. Now, why am I saying this? Is because if you look at this and you ask yourself now where I'm at with these factors, as in how is my speech rate and how is my uterine length? Do I think a lot? Am I even able to speak that much? Do I hesitate? And so on. Like take these two factors and look at yourself. Now you need to think and you need to remember as well. In order for you to achieve that, it's going to take practice. Many people, they don't know how to delay gratification. And that's a big problem when it comes to achieving anything in life, really. If you are not able to understand, not only understand, because yeah, we all understand that something is going to take time for us to get the fruits of it. But not only being able to do that, but as well, practice it. Like internalize that this skill that I'm trying to get will take time. And when you internalize it and practice it and actually act upon it, you are able to delay gratification in the sense of you don't get anxious when you are not yet where you want to be or where you or when you look at someone who's already there. So being able to delay gratification, being able to not compare yourself to your fellow classmate who he's on level 15, you might be on level 10, being able to do all of that, it will allow you to continue on the path and allow you to not get anxious. And sometimes that anxiety causes you to drop the towel as they say or stop in within that process or stop you know doing that process another thing that i want to mention guys is look I am fluent in five languages. English is not my first language, as you might notice or you might not notice. My first language is, and let me know in the comments, guys, if you notice that my English is not my first language. Sometimes I might mess up. Like, actually, today I said to my family, I am about to do a nap. Why did I say that? Because in my original language, in my mother tongue, in Spanish, we say, voy a hacer una siesta. I am going to do a nap. I am going to do a nap. So sometimes my brain automatically translates from one language to another, which is something that I always advise, tell my students in the Arabic language to make sure to not do that from the English to the Arabic language, because then you sound like that. I am about to do a nap. And sometimes it will come up without you realizing. And obviously, as I'm doing right now, you are able to correct yourself because you know what is correct. But sometimes you won't be able to hold back on those little mistakes. What I was trying to say before this is that I speak five languages. I'm fluent in five languages. I'm a polyglot. That my two mother tongues are Catalan, which is the language that I grew up speaking to my mom and my grandmother who raised me. And my father, he used to speak to me in Spanish, being in Spain and having grew up in Spain. You know, everybody speaks Spanish. But being in the region of Catalonia, these two languages are the official languages. And it's very difficult unless you come from a very conservative immigrant family that you don't learn the Catalan.
Catalonian language to a proficient level. And everyone that grew up in Barcelona, I'm confident enough to say that they all understand Catalan, but maybe they are not able to, to use it as they use the Spanish language. But everybody knows Spanish, that's for sure. And Catalan depends on how you grew up and how you was raised, but it is an actual, like in the schools in Catalonia, in Barcelona, for example, all schools teach in Catalan, all right? Except for the field or the subject of Spanish field, like it's an actual subject in school, but everything is taught in Catalan. What I'm trying to say with this is my mother tongue is Spanish in Catalan. I speak French as well, which I'm very not too fluent. I am fluent, no, don't get me wrong. Like, je suis pas français couramment, tu peux poser n'importe quelle question et je vais te répondre comme si... Peut-être qu'il te prendra ou, ou il te faudra quelques minutes pour, pour uh, te rendre compte que je parle pas français de façon courante et que c'est pas ma, ma langue. Mais à un moment, tu vas dire, toi, t'es... Toi, t'es un blé d'art, toi, en fait. Le français n'est pas ta langue. So I speak French fluently, don't get me wrong. I speak English as you guys hear it. Et je parle aussi la langue arabe, aussi, dans une façon, Inch'Allah. Et je ne dis pas que je ne suis pas en train de le faire. Mais, alhamdulillah, je suis très heureux de vous dire que vous avez été en train de vous dire que vous avez été en train de vous dire que vous avez été en train de vous dire que vous avez été en train de vous dire que vous avez été en train de vous dire que vous avez été en train de vous dire que vous avez été en train de vous dire que vous mother tongue is the Spanish and Catalan language when I don't speak it for quite a long time or I mean I always speak it because I always speak to my mom but when I'm not like you know a conversation with your mom it's not like you are not going to I'm, I wouldn't be able right now to record a video like I'm recording right now speaking in Spanish that fluent why because I don't use it that much anymore except for this period of time because I'm in Spain yes I'm speaking a lot of Spanish right now what I'm trying to say is that when I was living in Egypt for example for six years and then came back to Spain I saw so my my speech rate and my uterine length getting longer and longer. My rate was very high when speaking in, in the sense that I wasn't able to throw that many syllables per minute as when I grew up, basically. Why? Because I wasn't practicing that language enough. There is a very, they call it a rule of thumb, which is that you need 10,000 hours put in to master a particular skill in whatever field. This is a known rule. I can't remember right now who came up with, but I see it very, you know, sensical that for you to master a skill, like if you actually want to become a proficient student or a proficient Arabic speaker and you want to better your speaking, you will have to actually go ahead and put in the work and practice that and focus on that particular skill only. Many people, they don't want to enhance their speaking skills, but if you actually want to do that, what I would recommend you, and I will end this video with this practical step, is go ahead and make yourself a sheet, tracking sheet, and aim for 10,000 hours of intense practice practice of Arabic speaking. How can you do this? Very simple with very easy exercises. Like for example, you go ahead and just like you would try to enhance your endurance when running and or try to get as less seconds as possible in your 100 meter sprint, you do the same thing with Arabic. You take a watch or I don't know how you guys call it in English. In Spanish, you say conometro. A conometro. Conometer, maybe. Most of the Latin words you can just, <laughs> from Spanish, you can just Englishify them. So I guess that's the correct word. Maybe I don't know. But yeah, you take a watch and in one minute you, you take one picture, one random picture about an image that represents something and just freestyle. Like they say in Arabic, irtijal. Al-irtijal is like speaking without preparation and take that image and go ahead and in one minute focus on that and just try and speak about that picture and practice that way like your freestyle when speaking like for example in this picture في هذه الصورة طائرا يطير في السماء وأيضا أرى رجلا ماشيا في الشارع ويبدو أنه مسرعا إلى مكان ما and like that and you just speak and, and describe the image and in one minute you try and get as many syllables as possible and you try to make as less pause and hesitate as less as possible and you do that for every day if you want to actually enhance this you do that every day or whenever you want to do it but you track these 10,000 hours and I warn you Billahi Alaik and there was a student actually yesterday asked this question I will point it at them later on in the group I like Billahi Alaik I put this on you and I ask you by Allah that you don't drop it or you don't start getting anxious that because you are not getting where you want to be or because you're not getting 
good until you have gone over these 10,000 hours. These 10,000 hours, it might take you three years. I did a quick calculation before recording this video. For example, if you do it in three years, I think it was 1,095 days. Uh, if you divide it by 10,000 hours, that will be like nine hours per day. It might take you very long. It might take you four years, five years. But as long as you're tracking it and you are able to say in four years or in obviously you want to do this on a more like full time and you only focus on this particular thing, you will do it faster. But let's say you track it and you have in your tracking sheet and keep in mind like that in five years you're going to be able to say that I have intensively practiced for 10,000 hours in my life Arabic speaking and that is why I am here today and I'm telling you it's just sunnatullah is the tradition of Allah I'm telling you that you will get where you want to be in terms of your fluency and that's something even myself I would like to do to be honest obviously I'm telling you 10,000 hours that's to master it that's to become like at that point you are going to be, mashallah, with the tawfiq of Allah, you are going to become very good, like a master at speaking. If you don't want to do 10,000 hours, say, okay, I don't want to be a master. I just want to be very good at it. Let's do 5,000 hours then. But set yourself a goal and track it. And if you do 5,000 hours, for example, divide it by the amount of days or the amount of, let's say, if you do in two years, it would be 730 days. So check how many hours you will have to do per day in order to achieve that goal like actually track it and keep track of yourself and one thing that will be amazing if you do is record yourself throughout that whole process and then make compilation and you will see how focused and intensive practice in a particular field how many fruits and how amazing that can be and if you don't believe that just look at the people that you look up to for a particular skill look at Khabib Nurmagomedov why is he there do you really think that he didn't put 10,000 hours in his particular skill look at Michael Jordan you really think that he didn't put 10,000 hours Kobe Bryant 10,000 hours look at Steph Curry do you really think he didn't put 10,000 hours in that wrist look at Shakespeare do you really think that he didn't put 10,000 hours in his poetry look at whoever you want Imam al-Bukhari, do you really think that he didn't put 10,000 hours at memorizing a hadith? Look at anyone you want and their skill, the skill that they are known for, and ask yourself and read their biography and look that is actually something they did 10,000 hours put in. Hopefully this helps and I ask Allah to make you proficient Arabic speakers and, and obviously the last advice and suggestion that I would like to suggest to you guys, it might be a little difficult to do it by yourself, like if you know, just speaking to yourself, describing images and so on that is something that we actually do on a weekly basis in our weekly conversational sessions as you guys see on the screen right now these are sessions that we have with the rest of the students and for two hours we basically practice conversation and practice speaking and we actually put in practice these skills like you know describing images and doing role playing and dialogues and things like that in order for the student to practice that speech rate as well and his uterine length to make it shorter so with this being said if you want to take advantage of this because to be honest with you I don't know any other place as organized as this where you can on a weekly basis find the place to practice Fusha Arabic classical Arabic Quranic Arabic like it's no country in the world where they speak in the street you can't even say I'm gonna go to this country and just learn with the people no there's nobody except for like students of knowledge and people who are very interested about the Arabic language which is hard to find so I will highly recommend you and last thing that I would like to tell you guys is the winner of the last video competition where I said that I was gonna give him daftar at tabid if they commented whatever I said to comment in that particular video so you guys will see the name of the winner here so send an email to this email that you are seeing on screen and we'll give you that daftar at tabid so you can store all of that vocabulary for you to go ahead and memorize it and just have it as a personal dictionary a personal dictionary with all the words that you have learned from the beginning of your Arabic journey uh, with this being Hey guys, I will leave you with this. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.